In this video, we're going to look at uh, the common ion effect with um, weakly soluble salts. So uh, the common ion effect is uh, analogous to what we were doing with Le Chatelier's principle in chapter 14. And it looks at what happens if one of the ions that forms from a weakly soluble uh, salt what if there's some, some of that ion already present? So in, in all of the previous examples when we were writing ice tables, the initial value of the concentration was always zero and zero. So the question is, is well, what happens if it's not zero? So for example, if we have um, silver chloride uh, solid, and this dissolves into Ag plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous, and um, we prepare this, a solution. So we have a saturated solution of this, just a, a beaker um, with some AgCl at the bottom, and uh, we allow it to saturate. So this is AgCl aqueous, and it's saturated. So now the question is, is what happens if I add some NaCl into this? So when we add the NaCl, What's going to happen is, is the NaCl is going to break up because it's soluble into Na plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. And this is going to be quantitative. Meaning it's, it's soluble, so 100% of the sodium chloride solid is going to dissolve. So now when we add this chloride, what's going to happen is, is we're going to artificially increase the concentration of chloride in the, in the solution. So what the adding NaCl is going to do is it's going to increase the concentration of Cl minus. Now we know that if we increase the concentration of Cl minus, the equilibrium is going to have to shift to, um, to account for that. So what the equilibrium is going to do is if we raise up the right side, meaning if we increase the concentration of Cl minus, the equilibrium is going to respond by shifting left. So that's going to push the equilibrium uh, to the left. So what's going to happen is, is we're going to decrease the solubility of AgCl. And the, the effect of that is going to be a decrease in the concentration of Ag plus in the solution. So we're going to have less Ag plus in the solution than would be predicted if we were to uh, not have had any silver chloride present at all. So, um, so that, that's the common ion effect, and that's the principle. What we're going to look at is a problem where we uh, tackle the common ion effect uh, quantitatively and see how that affects the ice table and the solution to the solubility problem. So let's look at the setup of this question where we have a common ion effect. So uh, this says, what is the molar solubility of silver chromate in a solution that contains 0 0.001 molar sodium chromate? Uh, assume that the sodium chromate is completely soluble. Uh, and then it gives the KSP for the silver chromate of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. So what, what, it's basic, what the, basic, the problem is basically saying is you got this solution and uh, you put some sodium chromate in. So sodium chromate is soluble. So that means that our concentration of chromate in our solution is going to be 0 0.0010 molar. And then into this, we put some, some silver chromate. And the question says, well, okay, so if you've got some chromate hanging around, what's that going to do to the solubility of the silver chromate? So we know that when you have a common ion around, it pushes the reaction to the left, reducing the overall solubility. So let's look at actually how we deal with this from a quantitative sense. How do we, how do we calculate this in the problem? So we'll start by writing our... Uh, balanced reaction, Ag2CrO4 dissolves, that's the solid, dissolves to give Ag plus, plus 2CrO4, 2 minus, oh, I'm sorry, that should just be a 1, and the 2 is there, so uh, we get 2Ag plus, plus CrO4, 2 minus, and then we can write our KSP expression, which is going to be that uh, the concentration of silver plus squared uh, times the concentration of chromate um, it gives us our KSP. So now the question becomes, what happens when we write an ice table? So uh, for the ice table, in this case, we're going to have silver plus on the top, and we're going to have chromate on the top. 
And we're going to write our I, C, and E. And now um, for silver, we have nothing in the solution that's silver to begin with. But we, in this case, do have a starting concentration of 0 0.0010 molar chromate. That's in the solution from the, so the soluble sodium chromate chromate that was added. Now, interestingly enough, it really doesn't make a difference. In this case, we're adding the silver chromate to the solution that already has the, the chromate in it. You can, the, the same exact setup would apply if you took um, the other way around would be you have a solution with silver chromate in it, and then you added to that some chromate from the sodium chromate. Both of these both of these setups will be the same because the silver chromate is still equilibrating in that solution that can already contain some chromate. So whether you start by putting in the silver chromate or you start by putting in the um, sodium chromate, it's the, it's the same problem. So this is going to be plus 2x from our stoichiometry and this is going to be plus x. So we get zero molar I'm sorry, we get uh, 2x and we get 0 0.0010 molar plus x. So we can bring those values over to the KSP expression. 1.10 times 10 to the minus 12 is going to equal 2x squared times 0 0.0010 molar minus, or I'm sorry, plus x. Um, so... Now we have to look at this, and the problem is, is it looks like we're probably going to have to do a quadratic, because we have this uh, term here where it's 0 0.0010 molar plus x. Well, it turns out that we can do a very similar approximation to what we do with acids and bases. If the 0 0.0010 molar is much, much greater than x, um, then we can basically say that um, the the x is insignificant. So what that means is that we can basically get rid of the x and say that the concentration of chromate is not going to change because the x is going to be so small. And the test for this is to say, well, is 0 0.0010 molar divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 12 greater than 100? And it most certainly is. Um, in almost every case when you have a common ion, that um, that this approximation is going to work and we can get rid of the x. So what this allows us to do is we can basically delete the x um, from the uh, the chromate. So um, we can then solve this as 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12 is going to equal uh, 2x squared times 0 0.0010 molar. So if uh, 2x squared, which and then this becomes 4x squared, times 0 0.0010 molar. So if you solve for x, um, x in this case is going to equal, uh, let me just look up the answer, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And so this is actually your answer, because remember, in the last video I said that x is the molar solubility of the compound. Uh, I'll show you why in just a second, but X is always gonna be the molar solubility of the compound. That's because everything else, even if there's more than one, fundamentally the compound itself is just one thing. And then if, if it dissolves to make two silvers, we multiply the molar solubility of the compound by two to get the concentration of, of silver. So now let's look at what the concentration of each of the ions are. So the silver, uh, the silver plus is going to equal uh, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 5 times 2. So this is going to give us, um, I don't have the actual number, but if you multiply 1.6 times 2, you get about 3 point, we'll get about 3.3 uh, times 10 to the minus 5 uh, molar for the silver. So this is times 2 because we have uh, 2x. Now for the chromate, um, we're basically going to say that this is 0 0.0010 molar. The assumption all the way up here says that this x is going to be so small relative to the 0 0.001 molar that, that, that it's not going to change it. So we're going to get 0 0.001 molar. And that's true. If you were to add 1.66 times 10 to the minus 5 to the 0 0.001, it's going to be nothing. It's going to be a, a very small difference, almost nothing. So this gives us the concentration of the ions that we have in the solution. 
Um, but let's look at why x is the solubility. So if we were to take that 3.3 times 10 to the minus 5 molar Ag, what I'm talking about with this is that whenever we do this, um, see here we multiplied by 2, but if we were to go back, we would say that there would be 2 moles of Ag plus for every 1 mole of Ag2CrO4. So we wind up back to where we started, um, and then this is our concentration of the silver chromate. So the X is always the concentration of the solute, and then if you multiply by 2, that allows you, or if you multiply by whatever the stoichiometry is to get the correct concentration for whatever the ions are, um, then you get that. But the X itself is always going to be the molar solubility of the silver chromate. Now this one asks us for the molar solubility, so we don't have to worry about multiplying by the molecular weight.